With works reflecting the natural world, but made almost exclusively with metals, Cox became an accidental conservationist, clearing the earth of discarded iron, steel, and tin, and using that scrap to fabricate brilliant, whimsical, and powerful masterpieces of original art. I take reused and reclaim metal and incorporate it into functional and non-functional things but the difference a little bit what I do is just sometimes you have to really look at something to discover what the piece is made out of like it may be a dragonfly and you recognize the shape of the dragonfly but then it takes a little bit and you recognize that the tail is actually a walnut pick you know like your grandma's old nut set pick she used to have on a coffee table and that tail is the walnut pick and I can take a hog gate and um, you realize it's this fashioned big frame it's on the wall it's got a metal tree in it but then you don't realize until you really inspect it that it's an old hog gate from a hog farm it's probably been 80 years um you know at a hog facility and so a lot of things you really have to i think people like to look at it a while it's not just a shovel welded to a thing and you know it's a shovel bird it, they really have to figure it out on their own and they really feel like they've done something once they figure out the piece that it's made out of but, well, this, this is a piece of iron, probably 80 to 100 years old. So he was able to save that, actually weld to it, which is pretty hard to do, and make this design. Every one of these is hand welded. Every one is filed, polished, hand welded. It takes a long time to do something this pretty and this or neat and unique. And all his stuff is kind of like that. He finds it and he brings it to life. I like the trees. I like what he does. Um, most things that he does is from nature and I like things natural too. So um, I love his woodpeckers that he does, his birds, but the trees, the trees are my favorite. With nearly every square inch of its handcrafted walls and corners hung with original works, the Iron Gate Gallery at Cox Creek Mill seems almost alive with brilliant colors and designs that reflect an artist at the height of his creativity. With his reputation and the traffic to Cox Creek Mill growing by the day, Cox might be content to simply fill his gallery with new art and let the world come to him. But as New York's preeminent contemporary artist Romero Brito is quoted as saying, art is too important not to share. And nothing has ever been more true than in a case of Bradley Cox art. Fashioned not only as vibrant, unique works of art to admire, virtually all of his works literally engage the individual with elements and parts that Cox encourages viewers and patrons alike to interact with. Yeah, so actually I made these flowers out of a discarded water meter um, cover. And so it actually looks like these spigot flowers are kind of growing, you know, out of the base of the water mirror. So a lot of the industrial welding that I did, we work on high pressure lines and gasoline um, flanges that would actually bolt together. So a lot of the applications, they would use these um, studs. So these studs, once you use them, you have to discard them because safety, they won't let you reuse them. So I get these from all over the country. Um, I'll maybe get some of these from Whiting, Indiana. I'll maybe get some of these from Port Everglades in Florida. So it's kind of cool that these bolts were once in a facility with this loud, noisy refinery. And then next thing you know, I bring them all the way back here to Indiana Then they leave my place and they go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee in somebody's yard. And the metal lasts forever. So it's kind of cool uh, how long different pieces of metal travel. In keeping with that philosophy, the Iron Gate Gallery is not the only place where one can enjoy, appreciate, and perhaps even play with Bradley Cox art. With permanent public displays in scores of businesses, community centers, and towns throughout the heartland. And of course, in Nashville, Indiana. We took the children uh, through the beta program and they went to salvage yards. And he teaches a lot of art to these young people and how to repurpose items as they go searching and looking for treasures. So this particular face, this little girl, she was 14 years old, her nickname was Cat, and she played baseball. She loved playing baseball. So she had the ideas of the whisker, and this is a drawer handle that she laid down, and I kind of helped her um, figure out how to make the eyes work. But, you know, these are her ideas. This is a horseshoe with the bill of a hat. So, you know, she liked baseball, and her, her nickname was Cat. imagination he can go out there in the morning and come back in and 
every day he's just coming up with new ideas. I don't know how he does it, but um, he's really talented. He's a really talented artist, and um, he never stops thinking. He's always thinking of the next thing he can do. Cox Creek Mill and the Iron Gate. Extraordinary and unique metal art from the hands, heart, and imagination of Bradley Cox, a genuine American original.